Hi. See here today with the waves. Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We are here every other Thursday. I am your co-host Justine Espritu. My co-host is Matthew Johnson. Aloha. We are the Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, and every other week we bring farmers and other individuals and organizations that have a role and are participating in our food system, whether they are growing food, distributing food or making different connections to bring that food to the consumers of our community. So who do we have on today, Matt? Awesome, thanks Justine. So yeah, as Justine said, we are trying to get movers and shakers in Hawaii's local food uh, community. And uh, today we have a big time mover and shaker all the way from Maui. So that's why you might notice that no one is here on screen with us, but we have on the phone, uh, Danya Novak Katz with Edible, Hawaiian Islands Magazine. Uh, Danya, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, aloha, it's great to be here. Yeah, um, so today is kind of a two-prong approach, I guess, we got a lot to talk about. So first, Danya, we're gonna be talking about uh, your background and uh, okay. the Edible uh, Hawaiian Islands Magazine and the Edible Community Magazines, and then also talking okay. about Farm Day, which is gonna be coming up on May 20th. So why don't we go ahead and get started with just hearing a little bit about your background and how you became to be such the foodie that you are. <laughs> I think I became a foodie because I'm always hungry. <laughs> uh, and I'm always, always in search of the next great meal, uh, whether it be, you know, at a fine dining establishment or, you know, pulling a, pulling a carrot out of the ground on a farm, you know, it's... Uh, we're just always hungry. We're always curious about food and drink. Nice. And, um, yeah. So the magazine started in um, about 11 years ago, and it started with a publisher on Kauai. And I worked, I've worked for the magazine for 10 years. Okay. And um, Edible Hawaiian Islands is a licensing agreement with Edible Communities. And Edible Communities is the largest publisher of local food and local drink in the world. Wow. I think we're, we've published a little over 7 million magazines annually. And um, there are over 100 other edible titles across North America. There's Edible Boston, Edible Manhattan, Edible Seattle. <clears throat> and so forth and I own Edible Hawaiian Islands which is the entire state so that's why I'm on Maui today in two days I was just on Oahu this weekend and then I'm going to the big island we travel around eating right. and looking for stories and talking to people that are growing and ranching fishing cooking our food oh, okay and and so Daniel what were you doing before so you said you got started over on Kauai what uh what were you doing before other than you know have you always been in publishing is is that kind of your background or what were you doing before that yeah yeah i was actually a pub um well before edible hawaiian islands i've been with the mega you know i've had the magazine for starting 11 years now but before that i stayed home for about 10 years raising two incredible kids um who, who my to be son is noah he's show, 20 yeah? and our i have a daughter that's 16. And then before that, I owned a couple fine art galleries here on Maui. And actually, we had galleries on Oahu and the Big Island. And um, I published art. So I find that by publishing the magazine, it really it, it satisfies a lot of different things. It's, um, it's food, drink, farming, gardening, cooking, but it's creative as well. So I was in the publishing business for quite a while for about 20 years before I've done the magazine and then you know being a mom also helps too and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out happy there Mother's and all the dads Day. too yeah. but um, yeah I've always been in the publishing side of the business very creative but also has a business side to it uh, component as well okay um, well let's talk a little bit about the magazine itself so this is a, a worldwide publication, at least with the edible communities, and then Hawaiian Islands is obviously uh, focused here in Hawaii. Talk a little bit about the, yeah. the magazine. Who, who is, um, you know, who's the readership? Where can people find it? What's the content like? Um, we have a picture of, uh, I believe it's the latest 
um, publication that just came out. Um, but yeah, talk a little the bit about spring the spring issue. What yeah. Okay. Well, Edible Hawaiian Islands. <clears throat> I think that um, if people know the magazine, they, they absolutely love it. We are uh, quarterly, season by season. We're distributed mainly with our advertisers and then a few other uh, key locations. But Edible Hawaiian Islands is the only James Beard awarded food and drink magazine in the state. Wow. And we hold that distinction. I don't believe that there is another publication that's strictly just food and uh, drink. I think I right now I'm the only one. Um, hopefully somebody's listening out there and takes that as a challenge. Oh, um, be but uh, we, we, pub we publish season by season, and what we do is we share stories, um, really incredible editorial content, along with mouth-watering photography, and we share stories about people that are cooking, not necessarily chefs, although we do feature some chefs in the magazine, but we we just share stories about things that are kind of cutting edge, things that are unique and different. Like on the cover of our spring issue right now, I can't tell you, when we released that issue, I had so many phone calls, emails, tweets, um, Instagram questions. There's uh, We found a cashew farm on oh. Kauai. And I actually went there to look at vanilla, and I was looking out, and I saw all these other trees, and I couldn't figure out. It looked like a mountain apple, but it wasn't a mountain apple. Yeah. And sure enough, it was a it was the state's largest cashew farm. Oh, so you can read that story online on our website right now. Okay. But the magazine, I think, is uh, unique, and it has some great stories. It has great photography, and I think that it's. It's special because we really focus just on food and drink in Hawaii. We also have the support of Edible Communities, which is a wonderful support system of publishers all over the U.S. And we share magazines with each other. So I can see trends that are happening in from Boston, New York, the Midwest, Texas, California, all you know, headed over this way. And along with our James Beard connections, we can really keep a, an eye on the prize and we can really see what's happening. So the magazine just shares all that information. So I'm kind of curious of, of your transition from publishing in the arts to publishing um, on this food community. What kind of struck your interest in kind of really diving deep into this, this topic and how did that help you kind of learn about the community. I know for me and Matt, when we were like, we want to interview farmers, and then kind of exploring that, we started to get such a diversity of guests and stories. And I feel like it's probably a similar evolution for a magazine like like yours. So I'm kind of curious to hear that story. Yeah, Justin, Justin that's correct. I, you know, I've always had, I've, I've always had an aesthetic. I always like beautiful things. I like my house and my office to look a certain way. I like, um, I like to, you know, I love art. I love going to museums. I love looking at a plate of beautiful food or a field of something growing. There's just a real sense of satisfaction. And so I think that that was with me all the time. And I think I got, I got into the art business because it was really profitable, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s. And then um, staying home, raising a family, I think it was the same thing. I would make beautiful food. I would take my kids to see art and music, and I would introduce them to the nature. So I think that there was always that aesthetic there. I don't think it was a big transition. One thing I will say is that the very first time I saw an edible publication, and it happened to be I was on vacation in Portland, okay. and I saw Edible Portland, and I picked up the magazine. It was a moment that I'll never forget because the magazine is printed on uncoated stock, and we print with natural organic ink. Huh. So we take that um, recycling to another level. Yeah. And... I think that there's a certain way that the magazine is laid out, and it's a, it's a business plan, I think, that is very smart. We always have more editorial and photography content than advertising. And um, 
so when you look at the magazine, you read stories, it's just not a sea of advertising. Mm -hmm. It's it's about beautiful photography, really well-written stories, meaningful stories that teach and educate and inspire. Plus, we always have at least a dozen recipes in each issue. Mm. And um, I was just on Oahu this weekend and ran into a reader, and she said, hey, I had a problem making one of the recipes. And I stood there, got on my phone, we got connected with a chef, we all started talking, and we found out what, what happened and what went wrong. And it was so satisfying to see and hear somebody made something, had some issues, but we solved it. It was a, a great publisher's moment. So again, you saw your first issue of edibles you saw in Portland, and then did you take the initiative to start it here in Hawaii? Yeah, somebody had just bought it like a month before. Hmm. And it was during the recession that, you know, a really difficult time in the economy. So I just reached out and I decided to learn as much as I could from her. She was fabulous. Her name was Gloria Cohen. And she published the magazine for seven years. And I worked for her the entire time, learning as much as I could, selling advertising, uh, honing my social media skills, building my clientele. And then um, about three and a half years, almost four years ago, she decided to sell the magazine and offered it to me. And I jumped at the chance. So I've been um, owner publisher now for, um, we're starting our fourth year. Oh, awesome. Wow, congratulations. Were there any personal kind of initiatives you, you kind of spearheaded when you kind of took over as the publisher owner that kind of, you can kind of claim as your own or? <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, we, we did a few things and I think that the first uh, the first thing was that I, I grew the magazine. We added pages, we added distribution, and we fine-tuned our social media skills. And I, the reason is, is that, you know, I print 20,000 copies, and that's statewide. And, you know, they don't last long. So, mm. you know, if you see them at one of our advertisers, like at a town restaurant or Mahina & Sons or Cocoa Head Cafe, you know, it's it's limited and once the magazine's gone, you can't get it there. But yeah. you can subscribe. So we re I really wanted to work on our subscription base because mm -hmm. that can really carry the whole cost of the magazine through subscribers. And that's what we've done, too. We've increased our advertisers. And then when the magazine is, you know, you can't find it anywhere, you can always jump onto our website yeah. or in engage with us on social media. And um, we have statewide food events. We talk about recipes. We engage with other chefs and farmers. So we try to make the magazine, I mean, I love print, and I think print is forever. Mm. But there's also that social media side that really adds another dimension to what we're doing. Because, you know, some people love the print and love to read. Other people like the digital copy or they're, um, or they're just visiting and they're on Twitter and they mm. find us and they ask us for recommendations. So it's really a... Um, it's just a really well-rounded family, the edible family. Cool. Um, Danya, let's transition and talk a little bit about Farm Day, uh, which is, uh, uh, this is going to be the fourth annual yeah. Farm Day coming up on Saturday, yeah? Yeah, it's Saturday, May 20th, and Farm Day is always on the third Saturday of each May. Okay. And what we did, we... One of the most popular pages in the magazine was our Farmer's Market Guide, not only in the magazine, but also on our website. And what we decided to do was turn that um, attention into an event. Hmm. And then I thought to myself, it's really hard for me to be in four islands at once or seven islands at once. So we decided to use social media as a vehicle to connect people and farms, farm tours, um, and not only here in Hawaii, but it's, it's all across the nation, actually in the world. Um, last year, we had about three and a half million impressions on social media, and we had about engaged users here in Hawaii. Plus, we had some really loyal readers that were on vacation in Japan and Israel and Brazil and Paris. They were all going to farmer's markets in those countries and taking pictures and sharing what was fresh and local in their area yeah. and sent, you know, 
and using the hashtag EHI Farm Day uh, 16. And it was really incredible to see all this food being grown all over the world. So it's a day where we just ask people to turn off the TV, grab their family, go out, shop at a farmer's market, take a farm tour, or visit a farm and thank a farmer. And it's really grown into this really wonderful, wonderful event. That, that's awesome. And it's, it's great because you know, I know a lot of people, there's more and more interest in supporting local, uh, buying local, and you guys are really providing you know, a detailed list on here's how you can do it, and then having a specific day to really encourage people to go out and do it. Who, who else are you partnering with uh, for this event? Well, uh, well, in the magazine, <clears throat> in the spring issue, and anybody can um, get a copy of the spring issue. They can email or tweet or call us. Um, but um, what we want to do is it, it, it's expensive to print. It's expensive to ship. We all know that in Hawaii. We have three really incredible um, sponsors and helpers with this event. Number one is the Kohala Village Hub in Javi. And if you've never been there, it's, it's the old Jack's Inn. And it's a really, really wonderful place. Uh, you can spend the night. You can take a hula class. You can read books in their library. You can pound paiai. You can uh, eat in their restaurant. There's an incredible farmer's market right across the street on Saturday, the oh, Hobby wow. Farmer's Market. And they're on the big island. And then on Oahu, we partnered with Farm Lovers Markets. And you know it's the one at Pearl Ridge and at Ward Center. Pam and Annie, yeah. Um, they have four markets. They have and show. Pamela and Annie do a phenomenal job um, with their there's strict rules. It has to be local. It has to be fresh. You can't come in and sell something that you bought at a big box store. Right. And, and yeah. I appreciate everything that they've done to grow their business. I think they have five markets now. And then on Maui, we have Ocean Vodka. And Ocean Vodka is the only organic vodka in the state. And they have a beautiful farm. And not only do they grow sugar cane, but they grow taro and sweet potato. And they do tours like every 20 minutes. They have wow. a tour and a tasting. And they do an incredible job. It's centrally located. This year we didn't have a partner, um, a sponsor on Kauai. But um, just in the last couple of days, I spoke to Marta Lane, who owns Tasting Kauai, which are incredible local farm tours. She okay. does a farmer's market tour. She'll take you to a farm. You could pick fruits and vegetables, go to a... Uh, a restaurant that she designates in that area and then they make lunch and then they talk about education and uh, growing food um, so we're going to do a little something with her just on farm day but it's a it's a great day for everybody to come together and you know you can even not be on social media just get out there go to a farmer's market buy something fresh and local cook with your kids cook with your friends and eat together Awesome. So is this the big event you guys do every year, or do you guys have a, another series or different things you do out in the community, or this is kind of the big one every year? Um, this is the big one that we do every year, and um, we've also partnered, I've partnered with um, Amanda Corby oh. and Gooch yeah. from Peely Group. They're incredible, incredible uh and she's been helping me get the word out. We've been working together on meet with the media to try to share the information about Farm Day. And um, I have uh, phone interviews, radio interviews every day on each island. I guess so that makes us I'm part of the media because that. that's how we got connected. I love yeah. radio. <laughs> I love radio because it's sustainable, you know. And um, and a lot of people are driving and. Um, it's just it's just a great vehicle to get the message out. Yeah. So we only have a couple minutes left. Um, is there anything? Uh, what's your long term vision with the the publication? It sounds like you've got a lot going on. It's successful. A lot of people are reading it and interested in it. What's kind of next or or new coming up for the magazine? Any new initiatives? Ooh, great question. Okay, so you're going to hear it first. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> on, on Think 
Tech, Hawaii. Yes. Uh, several years ago, I started a pop-up restaurant called Kupu Maui. Okay. And it was because the magazine was quarterly, and I wanted something to do on those months where, you know, we upload to the printer and we kind of take a few weeks off. Mm -hmm. I started doing pop-up dinners, and oh, wow. we used, we were doing dinner for 50 people on a different farm. And then after about three years, I decided to sell the business and um, focus on a few other things in my life. And now I'm coming back. And I've just started a company. Actually, my website is not ready today. Hopefully by farm day it'll be up. Oh, but wow. the new business is called Lave Lave Hawaii. It's L-A-W-E, L-A-W-E. -E. Okay. And we're going to be doing social events related to the each issue when we announce oh, and we cool. release each issue. So it's season by season. We're going to try to do something on each island. Hmm. And so, you know, maybe be poo-poo, cocktail. We're going to make uh, food that uh, the recipes that are going to be in that issue and drinks that are going to be in that issue. We'll probably do it as an advertiser to support them. Um, and then after, um, towards the end of the year, we're going to start doing dinners that are going to be a little bit different. Um, I think that um, the marijuana laws are going to relax here. Um, in December, I went to a, uh, a marijuana dinner in Los Angeles, and it was a really incredible experience. I personally don't drink or do drugs or smoke pot, but the food I'll was delicious. And I was in this, <laughs> at, at this table with 20 other people that were engaging in um, uh, THC and things like that in their food. It oh, was wow. just an incredible experience, and I'd love to bring that to Hawaii of course, when it becomes legal. We should definitely host that event at the Food Hub Warehouse <laughs> over here on Oahu. So we have a space for, yeah. for that. Yeah, so yeah, we have uh, the Oahu Food Hub, and Amanda and uh, Gooch work out of there as well. So it's like a shared use uh, food uh, community processing space. So next time you're on Oahu, come visit us, and we'd love to host one of your pop-up dinners there. Wonderful. Well, I'll be there um, in next weekend. So Perfect. we'll connect when we get offline. And thank you, Matt. That's great. Um, I've heard about it, but I've never been there. Yeah, and, it's, it's um, kind of been under construction for the past year. And um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things happening. Okay. Is it open to the public? Um, I mean, it, it is. There's in, right now. It's you know, it's kind of like cold storage and a shared use kitchen and warehouse space. So it's not exactly uh, set up for public activities. But we've done like a yoga night there. Kokua Foundation. Uh, yeah. Different groups that kind of need space. We've let in and, and use the kitchen. So Kokua Foundation has done a, a class there. So space nice to well you know it doesn't have to be fancy with edible and our readers we just need to be together and we need to have good food around us and everything else just kind of works out so that sounds great yeah so remember the the magazine comes out each season so our summer issue which I'm working on right now will be out on June 20th and it'll be in subscribers mailboxes it'll be in your email inbox and um, it's a beautiful, beautiful issue. I'm really proud of it. Right on. Congratulations. Well, that's exciting to hear about your, uh, your new venture. Excited to hear more about yeah. that. And uh, just so Brett, bef before we uh, sign off here, um, what's the, the hashtag again for uh, Farm Day? EHI Farm Day 17. Okay, so for anyone who's participating in Farm Day, hopefully everybody is. Um, make sure you use that hashtag with all of your social media. Yeah. You're not really, well, I guess you do Instagram. Instagram. So yeah. everyone, make sure yeah. you use that uh, hashtag and get out and visit your farms and go to restaurants and farmers markets. Danya, thank you yeah. so much. And it you was know, great we, having you. Yeah, real quickly, they can go to the website and download the farm guide as well. And if they, you know, they don't want to search for a magazine or buy it, they can always find it online. Yeah, I did, that today. I did that today. I did that today. It was all the farmer's markets and stuff. That was great. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tanya. All right. I'm hungry, so I'm going to get going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time, time to start getting ready for dinner. <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.